Konnichiwa. Hola, how are you doing? Week number 13. I think I remember the weeks, but you know, what the hell? We have an exciting guest today. We have an actress from uh, Europe, actually Eastern European, which I'm probably slicing this all up, but here's Danielle Doyle. Hi guys, welcome to See You Next Tuesday, week 13. We're happy to have you here. It's another beautiful day in central New Jersey. Here we are. Headed home, of the, uh, home of the por pork roll, right? Or Taylor Ham? Yeah, ho home of the pork roll. Sure, home of the pork <laughs> roll. The, the state bird is a golden finch. Um, <laughs> really? <laughs> Get out of your way. And the golden state finch. animal is a, a horse. But um, anyway, Diego will tell you a little bit about our guest today. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I've met um, Una Shapatava about three years ago. We bumped into each other at the, uh, I think it was, I forget where we met, but we've had, uh, had a close friendship for some time, but she's a, a really famous actress from Georgia, not Atlanta, Georgia, but Georgia in, uh, in Europe, actually. He's, he's Soviet Union? That's not even considered Europe. I don't even, I have to Google that. But anyway, she's from Georgia, a part of the old Soviet Union. Uh, did a lot of commercials, a lot of movies, uh, came to New York to start a career. So she, I'll let her tell all about it. She's very inspirational. Uh, was given hundred percent toward acting. She's done a couple hits here, uh, some indie films. So she's a very interesting person. And I think, uh, like an inspiration of people. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And before we bring her in, don't forget you want to subscribe to our channel, hit the bell, click subscribe, make sure that you're getting, uh, all of the notifications for when we, when we send out our, our new videos every single Tuesday morning. So without further ado, here is this week's guest. Hey. Oh, Una. I always like, slice your last name, it's Shapatava, right? Yeah. Yeah, perfect, I always slice it up. I do, <laughs> you see. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanna welcome you. We were talk talking about all the good things you did. And um, I guess back home, you're trying to start a, a career here and during the pandemic, it's been crazy. So. Uh, you know, I know you're doing a lot of work here. So I'll just, if you could tell the people basically like a little bit about your background. Thank you so much for inviting me. I don't know. It's an honor and a pleasure. You know, I don't know about which background should I be telling because the format of the show, the podcast, because I have many professions and I have big background, sorry to say that, because I've lived 40 years in Georgia. And when I became 40, I decided to change my life and come to the United States. So it's a little bit weird. So, But what I pursue my, so to say, goals is being an actress, an artist, a writer. In America, you call artists those who paint on them. As we call Europeans artists, the people who are multi-directional. You wow. do many things and so on. So I do many things. I try to get into journalism, like writing, and, uh, you know, I write as usual. I continue, but it takes time, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you come to the United States, first concern is your papers. That's something that takes all your thinking and you know yeah. and it's a little bit stressful but it's fine yeah I'm just trying to find my way and it works thank god it works yeah I see, I see you're uh, you're blossoming like ever since I've met you you've always what I find inspirational about you you've decided to do something to become an artist and just like uh -huh. us and it's amazing you found you found your passion and you pursued it and I've seen that you've uh you did like an indie film uh can you tell us like what's going on in your world right now? What's, uh, uh, what's yeah, public? sure. Yeah. yeah, with pleasure. You know, during these years, I did some several interesting, really interesting projects with young students, with real professionals. I participated in a big feature movie, which is international, and which still has to be done. It's in process now. You know, they want to change something. It was really international and uh, big film I mean and the cinematography director was one of the most famous guys in Hollywood and uh, I was very happy to participate but it's still on the way and the, the thing in this kind of business is like you do some stuff and in post-production it may take years so you know you know that you are in and then <laughs> you're just waiting and sometimes the results are terrific like I had in my life. I participated in Indian movie we were on New Jersey International Film Festival. It was really fun. I loved it. Seeing myself yeah. back again on back big screen, you know, it looked good. And there are other other films coming and uh, some female projects because, you know, it's very strong 
you know, I'm not a feminist, but I'm a natural woman. So for me, it's very important to say my word. And uh, I was, um, so to say, accepted and hired as a writer for one very good magazine. But I was busy running here and there, it never worked. And besides, it wasn't my profile, it was photography magazine. But I tried to submit my writings. And the most interesting, what I did for now, to yeah. me, it was that I staged my play on Dream Up Theater Festival last year in New York. I had oh, a dream. Wow. You know, first I did it, yeah, on small stage in Producers Club in February, last February. And then I thought, okay, let's now change it. It's like your baby. When you write a play and you play it and you stage it, that's something new i never done. Yeah, I've done projects, but not like all by myself. You right. know, and the, New York is crazy. When you get to New York, you just want... To do to be strong and to represent to do all the best of you you know to yeah. give it totally it was really great it was really great <laughs> if you make it in new york you can make it anywhere in the world you know like, <laughs> yeah you know they say so but i believe like all japanese people have this kind of power but you are big in your country now see what can you do in other parts of the world so i enjoy that i think it's not only about new york of yeah. course New York is huge competition, but telling the truth, New York is not that New York that I expected to see. There are, mm. you know, so many things going, and uh, perception is one thing, and reality is another thing. It's like something advertised, and you get in, and you leave, you leave it, and it's really, really tough, really. Oh, my God. I, I see you um, also, too, like, what's pretty cool about you, you, uh, you work out a lot. I see you on Instagram doing a lot of exercise, <laughs> which is amazing. Oh, you, my God. Do you, you do a good regimen? I mean, do you still exercise every day? Uh, yeah, your... sure, yeah. The yoga is like, as long as we are in pandemic, one good thing that I have for myself, it's like having an opportunity to work out because I enjoy it. For me, it's like uh, human education and growth is very important. And I understand, to my understanding, if you want to grow spiritually, you have to grow physically. I mean, have to be prepared and clean purification and thinking and meditation i do all that stuff yoga i divide it now i have a chance mornings mm -hmm. have for yoga you know good stuff vitamins and everything then in the evening i go running and you know i told you i had this coronavirus in march That's and uh, yeah, yeah I, I i did understand it was corona but i understood it too late I was going to my jobs, running for gigs, auditioning, and I did not know something was wrong. And I was with this huge fever. I was burning for several days until I understood finally that I'm sick. You no, know? oh. and it lasted some something around three weeks. It oh. was it was something seriously. And one thing that helped me that habit of working out. I pulled myself, and I went to the park and I started working out. You Damn. can't believe it. Well, you yeah. Well, and my sister from Georgia, she was screaming into the phone, people, tell her she's killing herself. But seriously, if not that, you know, I just could not move. I just could not pick up the phone. I called the doctor. They did not have this testing. They did not uh, know how to treat it. It was beginning of the March. All this just started, you know. And what had I to do? I was just... At home, drinking a lot of liquid, I could not eat. I lost, I lost 10 pounds. What were the symptoms? Was it like everything you heard in the news was happening to you? No, I had total different symptoms. Yes, it was something like the first thing I understood, it started with pain in the joints. It was, yeah. I drank so much of Advil, nothing helps, and headache. Headache, yeah. joints, joints, and I just did not understand. I thought I got cold because you know we women we run without stockings and we are in high boots and you know running in five boroughs working all the time i thought okay i got cold it's okay but it didn't go away and then i understood that it was this terrible headache and joint pain yeah and then i started excuse me sweating and after all those years i could not those days i could not move i understood that i'm terribly sick terribly sick yeah yeah. And you have panic attacks and heart attacks. I am completely healthy. At night, my heart was beating like crazy. And I was feeling, oh, my God, I'm going to die. That's the only yeah. feeling you have. You are going to die. <laughs> panic attack. Yeah. Yeah. 
so my God. it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, I think uh, I think it's getting better. Like you know, COVID kind of disappearing, but I'm hoping that like everything clears up because of your career, you can continue doing what you're doing. Well, do you have any plans for the future? Are you taking? I do. Yeah. What's going on? Like anything you want to plug? You know, I'm very communicating person. I have really some, you know, friends and uh, there's no friendship in this business, but we still are friends. We share ideas and something and they are sending me the audition links and we have this professional website where you get, and I do audition, but the problem is everybody's telling, okay, we're doing this, but we will go, <clears throat> go back to work when this is over. <laughs> And no one knows when this is over. So yeah. we are just listening, getting to know each other. But you know, in all kinds of businesses, that's important. You get to meet new people, you communicate, you have new contacts. And I think that's really important. We don't lose the touch. You still like food you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We're, we're still working, just communicating, and we're society, whatever yeah. happens. Yeah. Thank God for technology and all this stuff, you know? It's amazing. Yeah, thanks, God. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we basically now, like our company, uh, you know, we have a lot of people that are inspirational. Yesterday we had a guy from Wall Street. I think what you're doing is amazing as well. You know, you get a lot of a lot, your word out there as well, your passion, and I see that. And yeah. uh, very, very cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, do you um, do you ever do – you, do you play tennis or is that your sister? as well uh, my sister she's a professional tennis player she did a huge petition because it was inter she was in the united states unfortunately when i was sick oh. and i just could not go to those she was in kentucky and you know she was in lexington and i was like okay because it was really corona i knew that so i never met her so she was mm -hmm. stuck in georgia now she's in germany and it was really hard because all the gyms closed it it affected everyone and she started the position of support of professional tennis players and all the world supported it was great cnn bbc guardian all those international you know and i'm really proud of she sent me the tennis racket so i will go to the park and play but i want to add something you know yeah. one good thing i did i translated my book i have it here my autobiography book uh, yeah it's like uh, my baby also i wrote it and it was published in 2015 in georgia it was huge thing because you know, I'm a famous woman and there yeah. are a lot of personal details and different people and I sent it for the contest. I'm so happy about it. And one more thing, in connection with your kind of business, I you know, tried to volunteer because I knew that I had corona and I wanted to be just like first line worker, but I don't have medical education. But I... I was a caregiver several times and it was a pleasure for me during this time because I never, I've never done that, but I had grandmother, grandfather, and I'm very happy that I could be of any kind of help. Oh. I went to old lady and uh, her children weren't there because, you know, only professional personnel around her and it was a pleasure, you know. So it's not only like you pursue your dream, you do your art and you are out of, the, no, I try to volunteer and it was a paid job, but still, I was very happy to participate in helping someone. So, for me, it's those, very important. It was a crazy time. Do you think New York is turning back to normal now, or is it you can't even Oh, my it? God. Uh, you know, New York, is, and I'm on Manhattan now, and uh, sometimes I go to Brooklyn, and I can tell you that the situation is different in every borough. In Brooklyn, it's like nothing has happened. People in the street, they don't wear the mask. They oh, go to some parties. I get some invitation to some boat parties, big parties, the private parties. And, you know, it's all about your consciousness. You have to understand that it's important to follow the guidelines. So in Manhattan, it's strict. You can see people in the parks. You can see people outside dining. But there is nothing like, oh, my God, gathering and hugging each other. And like you see in Brooklyn. So it depends where you are in New York. I haven't been on Staten Island, but they say it's quiet. And also in Queens, I've been a couple of times. I work for hospitals too. I do some interpretation, interpreting jobs, you know? So I go to some hospitals once in a while, once in a million, you know? And yeah. it, it's still standing, nothing works. Just post offices, you know, pharmacies, some shops now opened. No cultural events. That's terrible. So, 
So New York is all, and Broadway is closed till January. What you gotta do? Don't see that. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. So well, I don't know. Hope we go, go back. How can people follow you? Like, uh, I know your Instagram is okay if we put your link down there so people can oh, see what you're doing. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, I'm on Instagram and I have my YouTube channel and I wanted to make my website, but you know, I want to do many, many things in America that still are in the process and put it, but uh, yeah, Instagram is fine. Thank you so much. Yeah. What's, your, what's your address on Instagram? How can people find you? We'll, my we'll name, Yuna Shapatawa. Yeah, Yuna Shapatawa and that's it. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah. Amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Oh, um, my yeah, Diego's been been wanting to get you on here for a while, so I'm happy that we finally got to meet. And um, I guess it's a blessing for a lot of us, um, even though you're kind of, you know, waiting for January, you're able to do a lot of self development in the meantime, and yeah. really like, you know, check in with everything that you really wanted to do and get in touch with yoga and yourself and your book. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's really good. Um, so yeah, Access Healthcare Family. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell uh, so you get the alerts. And remember, you need access to get in. See you next Thank Tuesday. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank God you bless. so much. Be safe.